when you're you're chasing tents and you know it's uh, everybody else is putting putting their neck on the line you know everything's got to be dialed in perfect but um from a stage's point of view you know they were just brilliant um very very difficult pretty much rally gb conditions without the cold weather really um and exactly the same sort of grip level i would have thought so um yeah it's nice to go back in there to be honest it's, to another episode of my off the track motorsport podcast this podcast is proudly supported by both Viking Offshore and Carbon Positive Motorsport. Viking Offshore is a leading global company in the offshore renewable and shipping sector and is proudly committed to giving back. In partnership with Carbon Positive's offsetting initiatives, we all aim to retain our sport and environment for future generations. Please visit carbonpositivemotorsport.com to learn more about how you can be a part of this and help us all be positive about motorsport okay so hello everybody and welcome to another episode of my podcast series this is another rally review after the second round of the brc uh, tonight's guest we've got uh Oshin price so Oshin, welcome along thank you thanks for having me yeah that's all right that's all right yeah it'll be good to have a bit of a, a chat to you and find out how how the weekend went so obviously it was uh, a very good result but how was things for you yeah, good weekend. Uh, very challenging weekend. Um, happy with with the outcome, to be honest. Um, we haven't had the best of starts to the year. Uh, we had some funding issues and you know all the stuff that goes with it before the start of the season. Um, so plans were turned on its head. So um, yeah, managed to get the deal together to to do uh, well to at least start the British Championship anyway. Um, yeah, and unfortunately, round one didn't quite go to plan. Something silly let us down. Uh, not anybody's fault, you know, just one of those things, you know what rallying can be like. And um, yeah, I was a bit disappointed, but, you know, look look forward to this one. And uh, obviously not too far away from me, but um, yeah, really happy we got the win, to be honest. We really needed that. Yeah, uh, definitely. And you say this is, um, well, I don't know, would you call it, I know we spoke about this before, but would you call this your local rally or is this kind of just down the road? Ah. Uh... I, it's it's not my local rally, but it's not uh, it's not too unfamiliar either, you know. Um, it's close enough, but far enough away as well. So um, no, it's it's territory that that I know. Um, there's a, there's a few other guys that know the knows the roads quite well as well. But um, you know, it's 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 close enough, and uh, you know, very very good stages, very famous stages, uh, as everybody knows. Yeah, see the likes of like the Sweet Lamb complex and stuff like obviously i know that there's lots of testing and rally schools and all sorts of stuff that goes on there are you part of that do you go along for you know would you use the sweet lamb complex for testing and stuff when you can yeah we do um i've been there uh, more recent with with customers for training and tuition so uh, it's not somewhere where i've been uh driving myself for a little while um but yeah it's it's uh obviously it's renowned for its testing, so and it's you know very accessible to to people who want to go testing as well. So, um, in 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 recent times, I've been there um, more as a more as a tutor and a and a rally coach than a, than a driver, to be honest. Yeah, and how do you find that? How do you find like being a tutor? Are you ever like really scared when you're sitting in with somebody like, oh no, back <laughs> off a bit, back off a bit. No, I'm I'm pretty straight to be honest. So if somebody's not, um, you know. 99.9 percent .9 of the time you know you you get a, you know everybody's there to learn at the end of the day they're not there to mess about i've been in situations before where it's rally schools and and people are there to have fun and mess about and that to me is is not enjoyable because you are like a crash test dummy then you know they pay their money and they they just expect to do whatever they want but um no, from a tutor inside is very rewarding. Um, you know, rallying is getting a little bit quieter for me now with with other commitments and the cost of things. So, it's my way of um, trying to put something back into the sport. I've been trying to help a number of young drivers as well. Um, in the meantime, so yeah, I, I enjoy it. Um, there's nobody that I've fallen out with and uh, yet because they, they they scare me. So, um, and yet there's there's nobody that that sort of um left the day worse than when they started so um i must be doing something right do they bring their own cars with them then or do you have like a like a fleet of cars or something that you would use like super no at, at the minute um i've just been doing own uh, own cars and stuff um bring their own cars and i just teach them and get them sort of dialed into their own car um it's something that is in the pipeline with me at the minute um there's a 
there's an awful lot of things going on. Uh, I'm spinning many plates, but um, I'm trying to trying to not outdo myself and uh, and just you know bed in slowly. So um, now at the minute it's just uh, you know driver tuition in in guys and girls' his own car. Yeah. Oh no, that's 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 really good. And I would like to touch on that if we do get you back for a bit of a profile podcast, a proper off the track podcast, and we'll we'll delve into it a bit more and find out a bit more about you. But you know, this rally review is to find out about the weekend. So yeah, how how were the stages? Like I heard you, you know, saying it was taking a wee second to get you know dialed in, and you were adjusting the setup and stuff. How did you find the Fiesta? Yeah, the Fiesta from from the get go. Obviously, second rally in the car. Uh, first rally on gravel. Uh, we did a short short test at, at my new venue um, near here, so we got the setup somewhere pretty near. Um, it was quite good leaving there, but I knew that we'd probably be adjusting as the rally goes. Um, the the stages as well. There was sort of three three different stages, if you like. Um, they're similar enough, but it, when your setup's not hundred percent. Um, you can kind of tell the difference that when a car is working and it's not quite so good in the others. So, um, hey, look, you know, the car was still very good, you know, in the grand yeah. scheme of things. But when you're you're chasing tents and, you know, it's uh, everybody else is putting, putting their neck on the line, you know, everything's got to be dialed in perfect. But um, from a stage's point of view, you know, they were just brilliant. Um, very, very difficult pretty much rally gb conditions without the cold weather really um and exactly the same sort of grip re- level i would have thought so um yeah it's nice to go back in there to be honest it's uh it's not you know i've been in there in a mark ii um in the rec last year so nice to be there in there in a, in a comfy modern car <laughs> excellent how is the mark ii you, is that obviously like i know you've got a huge passion for the sport and you have done for years and you know i like i know that you come from this kind of like proper classic historic car do you just love the mark ii on those stages yeah the mark ii is good um don't get me wrong it's it's a car that's obviously i've grown up uh, in and around you know um there's always you know my grandfather's uh, had a mark one and a mark ii for as long as i can remember uh, i own i own a couple myself um in various states of project and you know some one is going at the minute but um you know it's a car that's obviously that i've got a, a a very big passion for um um so you know driving a historic car i see it as a is a treat you know when when i get to do like the rec at the end of the year it's a massive massive treat um yeah. it's hard work you know you have to sort of throw everything out the window in terms of technique with a with a rally two car but it's 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 a lot of fun and i always say to people that when i teach you know if if you can't if you can't drive a proper historic um mark ii you know if if your times aren't there with something to do with the driver because all the cars are very very similar they're all built from similar parts um yes you can adjust springs and different geometry and but the fundamental is you've got to have the knack, and and that's what I like. And I can just jump in one, and I feel like I feel like I went back, you know, forty years, you know, and I feel sometimes maybe I was uh, born a bit late. Yeah, yeah, fantastic. And then, so you're kind of touching a bit on uh, setup and stuff. What exactly, like, talk me through at your level of rallying, like in your test and stuff. What sort of things were you changing? Was there any huge, drastic changes, or was it like? clicks and suspension roll bar these types of things well to be honest it's um obviously be working with don buckley rsc you know they've got a very very good understanding of the car you know they've got a good relationship with m sports um Dombey's obviously a very quick driver uh still is a quick driver and and was back in the day so it's nice to have a guy like that in charge because he knows exactly what you're on about. And even the mechanics as well, they're very, very good. You know, they've, they've got a great understanding of the car. So we discussed before before the test, um, like a week before, roughly where I think or what I think I'd um, sort of have in the setup in terms of the diffs, um, judging on you know, other cars that I've driven and the Mark 1 Fiesta. I know things evolve, but um, generally, you know, things tend to translate um, as, you know, cars evolve and so on. So we had a bit of a chat about it before the event, turned up at the test venue. Um, we basically changed spring rates, um, anti-roll bar positions, and the rest is just done on the clicks. You know, your, your, your clicks are... are your, 
your finer detail uh, and obviously the spring spring is your is your sort of primary change um you can also in, introduce ride height as well depending on how rough the rally is or you know how rough the second pass will be um and another thing i haven't touched on was which was the big topic of conversation before the event was the diffs you know how many friction faces um are you running uh, how much preload and so on so it is a bit of a minefield you've got to have a good uh, mechanical understanding and and knowledge but um you know with with my budget i'm not able to test for an infinite amount of miles so we have to put in the homework before the event and before the test and and uh, and take it from there and and luckily on the event you know what we were trying to do was just adjust clicks you know we were we were near um you know it it did work perfect near enough on on the one stage but it just didn't work quite so well in others so we're close um which is a good thing and obviously very encouraging that there's more pace to come mm, yeah see when you're talking about like the friction faces and stuff on the diff is that like allowing like a a more amount of slip like adjust like the percentage of slip in it yeah that that's exactly it really um you know it's you want sometimes more more aggressive diff to get more traction but also in those kind of di uh, conditions if you have a, an aggressive uh, diff then you're just going to be sliding everywhere like a mark 2 you know um so you need to have some freedom in the car um to to cope with different grip levels and stuff but it's a balancing act you know you want to you want to have a car that has good traction but also you don't want a car that's just skating around all over the place because it's too aggressive you know so it's a very fine line uh, a fine window of opportunity and you know you'll you'll never have the perfect setup uh, unless you test you know uh, like like some guys do they do a lot of testing but I'm happy with what we achieved with the the amount of driving we did. So um, really, we had we had we were, and we won the rally. So there was no no cause to to man. Yeah. Do you see with it with the diffs? Are you like trying to get it almost as stiff and as tight as you can get away with? Like obviously, I'm thinking in my mind that like on on tarmac and with the suspension and stuff, it was kind of like go as stiff as you can until it gets far too dirty, like a go kart, and then bring it back just a, a little bit. And then that's when you're kind of really driving it on its limit. You're, the tires are really doing a lot of their work. Rather than it being like too, too rolly and stuff. Is it similar with the diff? Like if it's far too loose, it's just like really steering, like lots of torque steering and stuff. And well, I don't know, like how, how would it, I suppose on the gravel and with the ruts and stuff, you want it to be a bit nice and tight so it just goes straight. Is that kind of like... Yeah, it it's it all depends a bit on driving styles as well. Um, I tend to drive, you know, like a front wheel drive car, really. Even though that I drive, you know, a lot of rear wheel drive historic uh, escorts, but I quite like a car to behave as if it's like a front wheel drive car. Um, and I think to be fair, on the weekend I was a little bit safe on on the diff side, where everything was nice and compliant, not very aggressive. Um, but you know, we still had other other sort of um issues, like small issues really that we could have rectified had we have done more testing. Mm -hmm. Um so there's never you might set up a car for, you know, like I say, the one stage, um, which was fairly soft, soft gravel. Um, and then the other stage, like Maherin was very, very hard, compact. You know, it does polish, it's like it's like glass. So it's very difficult, doesn't matter what setup, to have traction. But, um, you know, tarmac, you want a car, like you say, as, as racy as you can get away with. And, you know, you don't want to be hitting, you know, patches of mud or water and it's absolutely trying to throw you off the side of the road, you know. So um, it's a sort of, you have to wear it up. You have to wear it up during the recce. Um, okay, we did test before the recce, but we kind of knew with the weather, uh, you know, it wasn't going to be a pretty sight with the, with the rain that we were going to have so um yeah it's all about doing your homework basically you know you've got to prepare you, you don't turn up on the rally and just expect it to go well but um again it's it's all part of having the right amount of people around you as well you know you have if you have the right crowd around you they um you can bounce off each other and use each other's experience yeah uh yeah definitely see how was your uh how was the recce up for it? Have you got notes for that already? I would assume from previous rallies, or were you, was there any that you had to write from scratch? No, we we started from scratch completely. Um, one was a completely new stage that I'd never been in before. Um, Maherin then was uh, the last time I used Maherin. I think was 
Um, we used it on the RAC, I think, but uh, in diff different directions. Um, and, and obviously on the RAC, we used the organizers' notes as well. So um, the, the notes I have uh, probably last time I was in there on my own notes was about eight years ago. I think we counted six or eight years ago. I can't remember now. So, you know, the road has evolved quite a lot. You know, it's it's still a, a part of the world that gets, you know, harvest, harvest for its timber quite a lot. Um, so roads change. Um, so, yeah, we started from scratch and I think pretty much everybody did. Yeah. I was having a look at some of the onboards. Obviously, the one that you put up today. That was a that was a hell of a mess, a hell of a conditions. You must have just been, just like fingers crossed and hoping you were going the right way. How was it? Yeah, it was difficult. I mean, you could just you could just see enough, really. I mean, you had to really work at it and concentrate, but it wasn't easy. Um, it was quite difficult from a from a co driver perspective as well, you know, because every time co driver looked up you can't see a thing um and as well you're going down a straight and you're breaking and you're not sure and you, you're actually breaking the wrong place so it, it sort of does mix the co-driver up a little bit so you've got to work together in that situation and and rodri as well um paul had it's it's the only only a second event in a rally two car um he's wow. he's been drafted in he's 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 my best pal he's he's had a promotion this year so he's up yeah. in the big cars now so for him as well he it was frustrating for him because he he felt like he was doing a lot of mistakes. And I said, look, it's difficult on anyone. So just don't worry about it. Forget it. Next stage, we'll, we'll be all right, you know. And yeah. and that's that's the way we treated it. You know, you don't get stressed. Um, just work together. You really have to work together. And, you know, if if he wasn't sure, you know, I'd tell him to speed up or slow down. And, yeah, that's that's the way you do it. And that, that's you've, you've, you've got to work as a team. Yeah, I suppose there's absolutely no harm in that. And is he going to be along beside you for the season then, is he? Yeah, yeah, he's um, providing he um, he sticks up with me that he's happy that, that, that I'm not uh, too demanding on him. Um, yeah, he'll he'll be there. You know, he's he's learning with every mile in the car. You know, he's he's come on so much in two rallies. To be fair, um, I think he's had a fair eye opener. He's he's done a lot of other stuff with me before testing, but there's nothing quite like competition, and um, it's been a big step for him. You know, there's there's no uh, denying that, and and he notices that. But um, yeah, he's he's fully invested in it and uh now he's got that win under his belt you know what a what a first win to have a british championship event you know that would have been my dream you know it it yeah. took me i think probably 10 years or something like that for for me to to get a, a decent win or maybe a bit less but um yeah it's um uh, must be a good feeling for him so he's he's well on board yeah no that that's great sounds like he did a good job and like you say second rally in the rally two car and he got a win really good yeah he was um i kept saying to him look it's not normally that easy um <laughs> so you know they don't don't remember you know the work starts now you know you've got you've got all of a sudden you've got an even bigger target on your back now so um yeah i'm i'm able to help him along a little bit you know um i said so my brain works a little bit like a co-driver as well so you know we can he can, you know, use me to ask questions and hopefully I can help him learn as well as uh, enjoy my rolling as well. And that's yeah. that's a nice part of being in this in this, this part. Good. So you are sitting together and um, you're sitting third in the championship, I believe. Is that correct? Yeah, third in the championship at the minute. Uh, I think like something like 15 points behind, which is, you know, it's nothing really considering we've had a DNF already. Um so yeah, we've just got to chip away at it, really. I mean, um, everybody's going there for the same goal, which is obviously the title. Um, and I think uh, Keith is going to be very strong in the next rally. He's um, he's not had a lot of luck. Um, so you know, it's maybe you know we've had our bad luck. Keith, poor poor bugger, he's had two two very difficult rallies now w with no f fault of his own. Um, so you know, it's other people's time to have some bad luck, maybe. So yeah. Yeah, we're still still in the fight, really. And like I say, we needed the win on the weekend um, to keep keep it alive, really. But um, we've done that now, so we can put that behind us and uh, focus on the job in hand. Yeah. And you, um, there's a joker system this year as well, isn't there? You can select joker for each. Would you get one a year? Yeah, so a week prior to the event, um, we have to nominate, um, well, should, should we choose to, to nominate uh, an event? 
Um, so we have to put that in writing then to the organisers of the championship. And then it's like a power stage point situation. So if you win, you get five. And then second, you get four and down to one. Um, so I don't think there's anybody from the top bunch yet that's um, nominated their jokers. Um, I think one guy did. I think Reese Hates did at the weekend. Um, yeah, Reese was the only one that... that uh nominated as joker for the event um you know that that has to be in sort of a week before um and i mean for me it was it was not a good idea really to nominate a joker because the car is still new to me so we'll probably wait like everybody else i would have thought um till the end of the year till we have a bit more of an understanding of the car and uh, hopefully our performance improves as well good good well no you certainly had a you certainly had a good start on on this rally, but obviously the the first one you had the the DNF. What what was it that actually happened? Yeah, it was one of those things really that happened. Uh, there was an issue with the the fuel pump. Um, there was a bracket broken on that, so um, basically the car wasn't able to get uh, get fueled. Um, it was simple as that, really. Um, not anybody's fault. You know, um, it wasn't something that was overlooked. It was just one of those failures that that happens uh, from time to time. So, hopefully, that's our bad luck out of the way now, and we can uh, crack on with the rest of the season. Yeah. Reminded me of one year <laughs> talking about fuel pumps when I did the mall rally, and we came out of service, and we had an issue with the gearbox that that took a lot of our time, and we forgot to actually put fuel in it, so we still had a loop of three stages to go. And we came round a new fine well that we'd pretty much, you know, we were running out of fuel. So we nursed it all the way around and we had about one mile to go. And we says to says to Ali, I was like, oh, right, you only live once. Let's just go for it. And we just started uh, banging it off the limit and kept it going. And then that came to our demise when we basically ran out of fuel on the stage. So then we had we ran up a big grassy hill to a couple of guys that were up there. They had a big bonfire and they had their tent and all that set up. And they were like, have you got any fuel, lads? Ah, here's a can. And it was a can. It was, it was like a 50-50 mix of petrol and diesel that they were using for the fire. He says, I no bother, we'll get that thrashed into. So we, <laughs> we put that in the car uh... and we came to the end. And that was, um, um, what, what's the, the commentator's name again that does the, the, the dirt fish? Uh, was it David or, or Colin? Yeah, so Col Colin and was at the end of the stage and he was like, oh, you know, so what's happened there? I was like, oh, we've had a fuel pump issue. Knowing fine well, it was just because we didn't fuel it up. <laughs> just totally blagged it. <laughs> yeah, don't don't uh, don't admit your mistakes. It's it's not how you get into them; it's how you get out of trouble, isn't it? So absolutely, we got to the end and she was a bit smoky, but we got through it. That's that's for sure. At least the uh, the piston rings were probably well uh, well lubricated anyway. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. How was um how were the stages anyway in quality? Was it was there a bad condition? Was it rutted up or was it okay? No, the the roads really uh, were were perfect. I mean, um, okay, I'm not sure what it was like further back, but you know, after the first first pass, uh, it was still still perfect. The surface there is so so rock solid. You know, it's uh, it doesn't really cut up. So, just the only downside to that, it just polishes like glass. So when it gets even slippier, so um, yeah, it was good. Good little rally. Uh, well put together, and we had a lot of fun. Excellent. And one thing I was just going to ask, I was talking uh, to somebody the other day about um, putting in bales and stuff uh, to, uh, to kind of reduce cutting. It was actually after the Northwest stages, because obviously all the cars behind, there was they were having a hell of an issue, you know, with, with mud getting dragged onto the road. And, you know, we were talking about, obviously we still, you know, Neil Roscoe went into the bale just because there was so much, you know, mud on the road and stuff. And it was kind of like, how do you avoid that? And it, it was kind of interesting about, you know, putting in these like cut preventers and stuff. Now, did I see in some of your in-car, was there actually lots of logs put on the inside to kind of stop that happening? Uh, there was a couple of places um, where there was just a natural log, log pile put there. Um, there were a couple of logs in, in one or two other places that um, that were there, but I I don't think they'd been put there for that purpose. There was a couple of actual man-made stuff. Um, there was a bale in one place that was purely for safety because it, it needed to be there, and and luckily it was because it was completely fogged over. So you would have they would have just 
probably claim somebody. Yeah. Um, and they put something else in as well to I think there was a culvert that was that would have appeared in, in quite a notorious spot, really. Um, well, Mr. Colin McRae went off there many, many years ago. So there's um there's obviously a reason why they put that there. Yeah. Fantastic. Well, it was a good rally for you. Before we finish up, um do were you watching uh, Chris and Noel, the their in car of Otago? Yeah, well, I actually, uh, I've been chatting back and forth with Noel. Uh, we keep in touch a lot. I'm still best of friends. So we were sort of chatting back and forth. He was a bit jet lagged, I think. So he was catching me at the right time. And yeah, they had a they had a good run out there. Um, yeah, I watched it on boards and chatted a lot about the roads out there. And again, that's that's a bucket list thing for me to do and uh, hopefully finish my car one day and, and get it over to New Zealand and sample some of the some of the roads there but no impressive driving as as you'd expect from them and you know impressive pace note calling as well from Noel. oh it was great stuff absolutely brilliant to watch wasn't it i was just loving it yeah no it just doesn't get much better uh, you know you've only got to look at the character of the roads and there's no there's no better car really to 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 take on that road than an escort yeah. really so you know, oh, it was really really impressive watch I wonder if uh, I wonder if Hayden was uh, sitting on his phone. He's sitting in the ERC, but he'd be secretly on his phone having a look at the results and keeping in touch with Otago. <laughs> yeah, I would have thought. I don't think I don't think they beat Hayden's record, but I think Chris is pretty pumped for it now and um, probably wanting to take it on again. I would have thought. Oh, nice! Is he up for going back again? Is he? I believe so. I'd seen I'd seen something somewhere on uh, on one of the social media channels that he just missed out on the on the stage record by a few seconds, which Hayden actually holds. So, um, yeah, I think he was up for a rematch. Oh, that's fantastic! My brother Craig, who you met at the rally, he just he lives out in New Zealand, and uh, his wife and his boys and stuff they went to watch the the Otago rally, and Craig's got his um, Subaru over there that he does a bit of gravel sprints and a bit of rallying and you know he's like unfortunately he's actually a saturation diver and he's in the chamber as we speak otherwise i'm more than certain that he would have been out there you know giving it big licks and sideways on the otago rally it's something that he talks uh talks a lot about yeah it's it's like i say the roads there are amazing it is bucket list stuff for anybody from europe or you know further afield you know you don't get those kind of roads over here so um yeah, you can see what, what the draw and the attraction is and hopefully we'll get to sample it in the future. Yeah, absolutely. Fantastic. Well, Oshin, I won't take up any more of your time. And if you're up for it, uh, we'd love to get you back and do a proper off-the-track podcast. We'll uh, sit and chew your ear off for about an hour and we'll try and uh, spend most of that convincing you to get up to Mull in the Mark II Escort. Yeah, no, it'd be good. It'd be good to do that. And uh, yeah, Mull, what a rally, eh? Oh, God. Yeah, I didn't have the best of rallies there last time, but, you know, really, really sort of opened my eyes to what the challenge is. But um, it's a bit of me, to be honest. But, you know, the circumstances of last time were very, very difficult. But um, obviously an experience I'll never forget for good and bad reasons. But, you know, it'd be nice to go back there and, and soak it all in again. You know, what a great place. Absolutely. Well, you're more than welcome up and you'll be, you know, welcomed with open arms, Oshin. We'll make you feel uh, very comfortable there and we'll get you out for a few pints of Guinness and trying to put you off your game. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I suppose you could you could have a go, but um if you leave Roger, my co driver, to the Guinness, then yeah, you you'll you'll be yeah, you'll have a job to keep up with him. So um he's a he's a seasoned Guinness drinker, so um yeah, he can do he can take my share as well. Fantastic. Okay, Oshin. Well thank you so much and we'll we'll catch you again for the next one.